Greetings today. It's Friday, March 15th, 2024. We are obviously back in the office, still assessing uh, damage and things of that nature, but for the most part, all is well. And as we've been telling many people, we're too blessed to be stressed. So it is what it is, and we're just going to continue on. That said, again, today is March 15th, and we've been trying to remind everybody to make sure that you have logged on to Charles Schwab's website. Uh, to confirm that you're still going to be getting client uh, statements and confirmation statements, et cetera, et cetera. We really want to make sure that you get logged on before March 27th. Otherwise, uh, Charles Schwab is going to potentially revert you back to paper statements and snail mail, and that can cause a delay if the Postal Service fails to deliver something for you, even though you haven't moved. We've had that happen many times, and then an account gets locked. So we definitely want to make sure that you have logged on to Schwab to do that every once in a while just to confirm you get those um, electronic confirmation statements, et cetera. Uh, that said, before diving in some of the uh, brief economic data, I would be remiss if I didn't again uh, encourage you to consider supporting me and the rest of the Hicks and Associates Wealth Management Cycling Team. We are again sponsoring a team for the V Foundation's Victory Ride to Cure Cancer. The ride is going to be on May 18th. If you are a cyclist and would like to join us, by all means, send me a note. We still have some time to add you to the team before we order jerseys, etc. Um, but we are trying to raise $10,000 as a team. Uh, myself, I'm trying to raise $3,000. You can see on the screen I've uh, only just recently started. I would love it if you would consider making a secure contribution uh, at the link that I will put in the description of this video. We certainly appreciate every dollar that you give. And as a reminder, every dollar, every dime that you give goes directly to cancer researchers. Many of those are right here in the Research Triangle Park. None of the money that you give to support us in this ride, none of those dollars go to cover the V Foundation's overhead. That is one of the reasons why we do this ride. We have a lot of clients that have fought cancer over the years. Right now we have one uh, that I can remember off the top of my head that has been fighting cancer. Uh, so that's why we do this ride, to try to raise funds for cancer researchers. And uh, we appreciate every dime that you give. That said, let's uh, dive in and look at some economic data. First up is inflation. We recently got an updated data point on inflation. You can see that inflation has uh, ticked back up just a smidge. Last month it was at 3.1, now it's back to 3.2. As a reminder, when we're talking about inflation, we're talking about the year-over-year -year changes in price. We know that prices are still very elevated from, from where they were several years ago. Those prices are not going to come back down unless we get deflation. We're not seeing deflation, we are seeing disinflation, which is a reduction in inflation. So we're right at right now we're at about 3.2% year over year. While that is within striking distance of the 10-year average. The 10-year average is 2.8. So while it's close to that 10-year average, this 10-year average is still higher than what the Federal Reserve wants to see. The Federal Reserve is targeting a 2% inflation rate. Inflation is not going away and one of the things that we talked about in the economic video that I posted a week or two ago is that there is certainly very real risk that inflation could tick back higher. So this leads us to talk a little bit about the Fed funds rate. Obviously, we've had a dramatic increase in the rate that is set by the Federal Reserve. And you can see that I've added this green line at four and a quarter. This is the rate that I have suggested is a reasonable target for what the Federal Reserve rate might be by the end of this year. Uh, one of the things that the stock market participants have been uh, anticipating is uh, a cut in the interest rate set that is set by the Federal Reserve. While I would certainly agree that I think it's reasonable that the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates, I've never believed what the futures market has been suggesting. For a while, the futures market was suggesting that um, there might be as many as six interest rate cuts this year. I never thought that was uh, very likely. Those expectations are starting to come back down in part because of that inflation report that we just showed you. But why do I say four and a quarter is a reasonable target? Well, on the screen right now is the yield for a 10-year treasury. Then I'm going to add a green line. That green line is that Fed funds rate. And so you can see that there is a large amount of correlation. This is a, a longer explanation in the economic video that from a couple weeks ago. But that's why I'm suggesting that four and a quarter might be a reasonable target for the Fed funds rate. Uh, Ten-year Treasury yields have come down. They've risen a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if it settles in somewhere in here. And that's why I'm suggesting that the Fed funds rate target might reasonably be four and a quarter. 
So let's switch gears and take a look at the Atlanta Federal Reserve's GDP Now tool, which is a habit we have towards the end of each quarter. And you can see that the Atlanta Federal Reserve is expecting the first quarter 2024 uh, GDP growth will be about 2.3%. That is as of earlier this week. So if the Atlanta Federal Reserve is correct and GDP comes in at 2.3%, you can see on the right side of the screen that the economy is beginning to slow down just a little bit with the last three quarters coming progressively uh, lower numbers. So that's going to bring us to our last slide for today. This is small cap as measured by the iShares Russell 2000 ETF. What we're, we've been talking about here is the fact that small cap stocks have been in this base. This is going back to early 2022. So the small cap stocks have been in this basing formation or sideways channel for two years. And earlier this year, it, small caps finally broke out and then they came back in and they retested this 50 day line and they broke out again. So that was good news. However, what's happened over the last week, we're just going to zoom in just a little bit. What's happened over the last week is a little concerning because once again, small caps have come right back into that base formation. And in addition, um, the, the percent of the small cap stocks that are trading above their 200 day moving average has just slipped below that 50% DMARC line. Now, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you might have seen a note that I posted, I think just a day or two ago, specifically about small cap stocks. Obviously, if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, you're welcome to look me up. You'll find me under Theodore Hicks. Um, but one of the cliches that we use here in the office is strong opinions weakly held. And by weak, I mean not strong. So what we're talking about in that is and when we're looking at the evidence, we're constantly looking at evidence to determine if our opinion needs to change. And just two days ago, I was concluding that, uh, yeah, I like what I see in the small cap space. And it looked to me that this downtrend here on the percent above the 200 day moving average, it looked like that trend was being broken. Obviously, the percent above uh, the percent above uh, the 200 day moving average has come down. And that's why I've got this black line drawn in here. But it looked to me like we were finally breaking that downtrend. That's a good sign. Yeah, well, it didn't happen. It actually broke down and it's gotten a little bit worse as in we're now down below that 50 percent DMARC line. So that's a, got me a little bit uh, concerned because if we are going to see a strong bull market, we really need to see the participation from the smaller company stocks. Uh, today, the small cap stocks are trading up just a little bit. It's in right now. It's right about midday. So we'll see how the day ends. But this has definitely got me a little bit concerned. So that'll wrap it for today. Obviously, if you have questions on how we might serve you in managing uh, your portfolio or your uh, IRAs, et cetera, by all means, feel free to reach out to me or my team. You'll find our contact information at hicks-associates.com. Till next time, we thank you for watching and we'll talk to you soon.